Our next speaker is uh, Jay Melikin uh, uh, from Intel. He is uh, it's probably has a new t uh, a, a new class of title there called a, a maker czar. Um, and uh, but Jay came out of the industrial design group at uh, uh, and research group at Intel, and he kind of heads up there. Uh, a, a lot of their interface with the maker community. So please welcome Jay Melikin. Oh, hello. Thank you. Uh, so let's see. Make sure I can make this thing work. So um, we've heard a lot about uh, maker education today and some really great programs that are out there. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why you see uh, Intel's name associated with some of those programs. So why does Intel, as a company, care about educating makers? And I'm going to, uh, if this works, no. Guys, do I get the slides up, Paloma? Oops. Now I'm way far ahead. I clicked OK. So I'm going, to give, I'm going to give up the answer right up front here. Um, it tells a company that thinks constantly just a little bit out in the future. Um, you know, w with a little bit of optimism and a little bit of anxiety mixed together. Um, so we're always worried about what people are going to be doing with compute power 10 years out. Uh, and it's not just thinking about um, the chips and how many transistors are on them. It's thinking about what are the applications for computing that people are going to be interested in uh, 10 years from now. Uh, and um, we're th the Moore's Law company, of course. Um, so that's kind of where um, uh, the, um, the, the maker education stuff comes in for us. Uh, we're thinking about what are the applications of computing going to be, um, and who's going to be inventing them, who's going to be promoting them, who's going to be productizing them. Uh, so for Intel, uh, you know, the, the reason that we're interested in uh, educating makers is that we see the maker movement as really the, the lifeblood that's fueling the next generation uh, of innovators. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, the, the next generation of Intel employees. We need to be prepared uh, for whatever comes and to be prepared with a workforce that's, that's skilled and ready and willing to able to work with us on inventing whatever that future looks like. So I, I give um, a lot of talks on uh, and ask, get asked a lot of questions about why does Intel care about the maker movement in general. Um, generally, I, I think for an, an audience like this at MakerCon, that's probably pretty obvious, but that's not always so obvious for folks uh, at Intel, that analysts or, or executives, even for um, you know some of the, the managers at Intel now. Um, so why would we be interested in this odd collection of, of people who do um, robotics and are advocates for sustainability and reuse and are seamstresses and fire artists um, all these crazy steampunk things. Uh, it, it generally, um, you know, I start with the story that people are more familiar with. We're very familiar with a certain kind of maker, people who take uh, shrink wrap software and make uh, their own content. User generated content is something that the company got their heads around uh, pretty well um, in, in the recent past uh, because it drove this, the sales of PCs. That's easy for us to sort of quantify and understand. Um, what's different, of course, with, uh, with this kind of maker is um, that they are looking for a different type of participation, a different type of role, and a different type of relationship uh, with technologies. And the story that I always use, it's a great story um, that people know, even if they don't know the details of it, uh, is the story of um, the uh, Microsoft Xbox Connect. And what happened when that was released um, by Microsoft as a product, as a box product, um, the maker community, as I think probably most people around here know, um, specifically uh, Lamar Freed, uh, issued a, a, uh, a bounty, uh, a reward for someone to open source that, that code and release it to the internet. Uh, she offered a $2,000 reward. 
Um, Microsoft, uh, of course, was not happy with that. Um, said, you know, you're void your warranty if you pull with this box. Um, and so her response was, well, let's make it 3,000 then. Uh, <laughs> so uh, within a matter of days, I think, um, Bunny Wang uh, cracked that code and, and hacked it, released it to the internet. Um, and, you know, since then, Microsoft, to their credit, um, turned around very quickly and said, you know, this is actually a really good idea. We should be open sourcing this um, for research and for academic purposes. Um, and um, what happened, of course, was that rather than having that technology locked up to the uses of just the uh, Microsoft game developer community, a very small group of people who I'm sure do great things with it, um, all sorts of people started coming up with crazy ideas that, uh, you know, Microsoft would have never thought of, uh, like this, uh, this skateboard um, that you uh, control, gesturally controlled skateboard, uh, or um, this uh, shopping cart that follows you around in the grocery store. Uh, those are, I think those are two products, I think, I believe it's correct, those are two uh, Chaotic Moon projects out of Austin. Um, but great, great experimentation on this platform because you're going to get a lot more experimenta experimenting from the, the world of developers, especially developers who can access something as simple as an SDK for, for Connect, um, than you are from Microsoft Research or Microsoft game developers. So uh, the company gets that. Um, and uh, what it has changed for us is um, you know how do we think now about designing our products uh, for people who are not just going to consume the products but who want to take an active role in the in the creation of the technology and the creation of what that technology does. Uh, so I'm not going to talk a lot about Intel products. I'm talking about education, but these are two of the products that we have out now as a company. Intel Galileo we released just about just under a year ago, I guess two weeks less than a year ago. Uh, uh, and then um, Edison, we just released last week. Uh, so two of the platforms that we now um, you know, work with to make the community on building out. So uh, the other, some of the other things that this changes for, um, for, for Intel is how we think of who a developer is. Um, this is um, a Andrew Katz, who I think is actually going to be is he here? Hey! <laughs> Andrew. So, <laughs> yeah, like this is this is a couple of years ago. And I, I, I think I wrote this note to your mother um, that um, you're famous around Intel um, because I took a picture of you a couple of years ago at, at Maker Fair, and um, you were working on a project. Uh, that was very similar to some of the stuff that was going on in our embedded group. Um, but uh, you, you would advance a little bit further uh, with your laptop and, and Arduino. Um, and I showed, I showed the folks back at Intel, um, this is what's going on at Maker Faire. This At the time, Andrew was 12, I think, right? Um, and, um, and they were like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> we better do something about that. Uh, so uh, you know, developers, we, we, we thought we knew who our developer communities were. They're the certified Microsoft developers that uh, certified this and that developer. Um, it, it, now it has expanded exponentially to all sorts of different people. Uh, and and uh, it's also changed who we think uh, about as our customers. Traditionally, Intel's customers are uh, OEMs, ODMs, uh, you know, folks like Motorola, Lenovo, uh, who are working in their labs, making computers, have long lead times for when those computers are going to come out. Um, but now what we see is a whole bunch of smaller companies that are coming up on, on Kickstarter, starting their projects, and capturing a lot of attention and mind share. Um, so our customers aren't nearly as consolidated as they used to be. There's a lot of them. They may be smaller, um, but they're really interesting and doing work really quickly. Um, so the question then becomes, you know, who's going to come up with the next big thing? It's probably not going to be us in our little lab with the 12 of us um, or, um, you know, the folks in the Samsung lab or the folks in the Motorola lab. Those guys are all doing great work. Um, but 
you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people available to do this kind of work. Uh, so what we do now with our, our education programs um, is um, try to get them uh, equipment. This is just a, a map of uh, the U.S. Um, distribution. We donated um, thousands. It will be 50,000 by the time we're done. Um, Galileo boards uh, to universities around the world. Um, this is just the, the U.S., but it's a, it's a global program to about 1,000 universities um, to get those students, you know, thinking about to, to, to spread throughout the crowd of innovation the tools to make um, the next big thing. Uh, we do that so we, we uh, donate these boards to, uh, to these products to, to universities around the world um, and we also um, have sort of more hands-on relationships with a number of different schools including Georgia Tech. This is a, a, um, a professor, uh, Jim Budd, who I just spoke with uh, out at our developer conference, who has a great lab um, for working with all sorts of different development boards, including ours, uh, where you can take uh, little cards from their collection, sort of like a, a file cabinet, and put them on, uh, that the outline different types of sensors and connectors, put them on this table, and it'll explain to you what they are. So they have a whole catalog of, of hardware um, uh, accessible through this little interactive database. Um, we also do things like uh, sponsor the, the Cornell Cup, which um, if people were here earlier this morning uh, listening to uh, Dave Schneider, he talked a little bit about Intel's involvement uh, with the Cornell Cup. Um, we have, um, we'll be, we'll end up doing about, just from, from um, my division, from the group that does uh, Intel and uh, uh, Galileo and Intel Edison, we'll end up doing about 20 hackathons this year. So we're actively engaged um, going out to, this is MHACS, uh, University of Michigan. Um, uh, we're actively engaged in going out and sort of working with these students to um, help them learn the tools uh, and, uh, you know, um, see what they come up with. And then we have um, our friends that we work with at the university generally represent us at Maker Faires. So um, there'll be some here this week. This is uh, us at um, Maker Faire Shenzhen um, recently uh, with some of the local students there who had, who had worked with a Galileo board to make a, a little copter there. Um, so we'll end, and we'll end up doing about 20 Maker Faires this year as well around the world again. So back to the company. Um, you know, the other thing that, that changes for us is what uh, work looks like inside the company. We take these tools that we're introduced to usually from uh, students uh, or by students um, and bring them back into the company. So this is one of our, our senior technology directors uh, working with, I think he's working with a Makey Makey and some copper tape. <laughs> um, I got a designer, who knows what. but. Um, uh, this, these tools, these processes then come back and, and impact the way that we think about our own prototyping processes, our own research and thinking processes as well. And then it changes, of, of course, um, and to get back to, to the students, who um, is working for us um, and what are their options, what are the way they're thinking about their careers. Um, this is uh, actually me and Jay Silver. Um, uh, the, the guy who invented Makey Makey, um, who used to work in our group um, before that became so successful. Uh, and uh, he, he, these are the t types of people that we um, hire and, um, you know, they have a lot of other options besides coming to work at a, a corporation. Uh, so we have to sort of think differently about uh, how they fit into the corporate culture. Uh, and then importantly, uh, uh, of course, um, it changes how we think about who we want to work for us in the future. This is one of our um, uh, young spokespeople, Skylar St. Ledger, um, very good spokesperson for our products uh, and um, a good representative of, um, you know, the type of people that we like to, to look for now who are active in the maker community. So this is, I know, a weird place for an introduction in, in the talk, but uh, my name is Jay Malikin, and um, I, I uh, work at Intel. This is how people generally see me, and sort of swagged out with banners and, and t-shirts and badges. Um, that's me up in the upper right-hand corner um, without the facial hair. Um, and um, I, I, my confession here is that I am not an engineer, even though I do this, this kind of work. 
Um, I was, as a kid, uh, the art nerd. Um, I was told that I was good at drawing. Um, I was told that you know that was a career I should pursue, and I did. I actually went to, to art school. Um, my sister up there was actually the, the math genius, and she's a lawyer, um, so she didn't she didn't pursue the career there. But um, we talk a lot about um, about um, underrepresented uh, populations, uh, especially in the, in the high tech uh, world, and. Uh, you know, this is a, a way for to me. To, I'm not a great person to talk about women and girls and making, but one thing I do understand is that you're pegged very early with a learning identity, uh, and um, you know you, you absorb what people tell you you're good at. And I understand that that is that's something that's that's gendered. Um, so what we did a couple years ago is start a program called Start Making. Um, and uh, the idea was there's a lot of people out there who don't identify, self-identify as strong at math and science, but who are going to make incredibly significant contributions to our future, which is, you know, by definition, a technological future. So how do we get those people interested in thinking about careers at Intel as students, uh, thinking about, um, you know, what they could do? So the idea was let's put together a whole series of activities uh, that really appeal to and have hooks to the people who are not necessarily thinking of themselves as um, strong at math or mechanics, um, but uh, who are motivated and compelled by the idea of creating things, um, by music, by sculpture, um, uh, by um, uh, artistic creations of all kind. Um, and so we put together this program and we launched it at Maker. The great thing for, for me is that this thing has now become a, a real program. Um, the computer clubhouses, Intel computer clubhouses, have taken this up um, and they develop a, a, a program around it. Um, it was used in 25 clubhouses uh, last year. They're going to expand it now. Um, it was piloted with um, in a summer camp for girls. Uh, in five clubhouses over the past summer, uh, and it's proved to be extremely successful in terms of changing the way that people think about themselves, identify themselves as potential makers and creators, and helping them to develop a confidence in, in their ability to create, as well as a confidence in their ability to use the technologies and the tools. So it's a great program. We've done that with um, the, the, the summer program was in association with the Maker Education Initiative as well. Uh, and these are some of the, the principles. Um, I won't go through this, um, but there's a, a, a booklet that you can access that we can get you from um, the computer clubhouses if you're more in, you're interested in that. We also do train, teacher training. Uh, we train um, uh, middle school and high school uh, teachers um, with Spark Fun. Uh, 125 teachers in six cities this year. Uh, and luckily for us, uh, we have the the strong support of uh, our CEO. Brian Krasanich, who is a maker himself, who has two daughters, and who is going to be speaking here as well tomorrow. So um, I don't have um, any time. I was going to show a quick video. But if you're interested in knowing more about um, the, some of the programs that we do with young girls in education, uh, you can check out YouTube. There's if you, if you look up Tech Girls or Intel Tech Girls and Tech Shop, you'll find a, a pretty interesting video about that. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you.